artificial electromagnetic radiation is harmful to your health. I'm sure you've heard that from some crazy Ann or coworker by now. Well, I'm here to tell you that you can take off your tinfoil hat now because your crazy aunt is on to something. The reason I clarified artificial is because we are electromagnetic beings from head to toe. All the way down to our cellular level, our mind and body are communicating electromagnetically. We're also in constant contact with the, the universe itself, with the sun and its rays that, we're, that we produce into energy and we manufacture into vitamin D, as well as the earth. You may have heard of earthing or grounding. When we have skin contact, go out barefoot and stand on the earth, you're actually receiving electrons from the earth, some of that electromagnetic radiation from the earth that helps balance out our physiology. It's been shown to reduce stress and pain and actually reduce inflammation. It works in the very, very similar to electricians, why they have to ground wires when they install them in your home. Well, it's because if they don't, they're an overabundance of energy buildup will start to malfunction some of your appliances and even has been known to cause fires. So after knowing some of these things and how connected we are with this type of radiation internally and externally, wouldn't you think that towers like this one or that one could affect our health at the most fundamental level, would well, you be right? There's a significant amount of studies that show the closer you live to a radio tower or, in, or a large antenna, the higher rate of disease, especially in children. And it's been shown with cancers. And if you look up antennasearch.com in your neighborhood, put your address in, I put mine in, and there's around 130 towers and then three or 400 antennas within a three mile radius. I'm in Chicago, Illinois in Avondale neighborhood, but imagine all that energy penetrating our bodies like it does these walls when we're trying to get signal for our television or our phone 24 seven. It's gotta affect our biology. It just, it, it doesn't make sense not to. And there are a lot of studies out there that prove it. Back in 2011, the World Health Organization put out a study or funded a study that showed so much evidence that they labeled as a 2B class carcinogen. And then fast forward to 2018, the NIH funded the National Toxicology Department. And there was so much evidence there that they labeled it a class one carcinogen, the same as X-rays. X-rays are considered ionizing radiation and ultraviolet radiation extreme is, is, is called ionizing. It's been known to break up the molecular bond. It's been proven to be a carcinogen or it took a while, but it's the reason why dentists put a big lead vest on you and you go to the airport and they don't let children in the big machines, the big x-ray machines and expecting mothers because they're them are the most vulnerable. And then non-ionizing is all the other radiation from our phones, towers, radio, all of our smart devices. And it's been shown in this study by the NIH that it's, it's the same toxicology as the ionizing radiation like x-rays. There's actually tens of thousands of studies that some show some sort of biological effect that this ionizing radiation has on us. And over 1,500 peer-reviewed studies that show this same sort of effect. So th there's a lot out there. There's a lot of lobbying by the telecom industry, which is a billion dollar industry. That's kind of um, 
censoring a lot of this and, and ensuring that it doesn't go public. I, I could do a whole speech on that myself, so I don't want to dig into that. But there's a lot of evidence out there. You, you just have to look. I'll provide all that in the show notes. You look at it yourself. Don't just automatically believe me. If you dig in deeper of why it's causing some of that damage, we have these things called voltage-gated calcium channels in our cells. And what that does is it essentially, kind of like it sounds, it, it doesn't allow too much calcium to enter our cells. And that it provides that gated effect. Well, there's in the last 25 years, there's been 26 studies that show non-ionizing radiation disrupts those calcium channels and allows too much calcium to get in. And when that happens, there's oxidative stress that starts to build up and apoptosis, which is cell death. Well, when you have oxidative stress that continues to build up day after day, year after year, it'll eventually start to turn into oxidative damage and then it'll eventually turn into inflammation and chronic inflammation and which leads to disease and you'd probably wonder what we see just an immense amount of disease all across the country if this was the case because you just said antennas and towers were all around us and it's blasting through our bodies well look at some of the data out there it's pretty scary of how much disease and increase of disease over the last 10 to 25 years in our country and most countries now, the, the, this radiation isn't the only variable. There's plenty of other variables, but I can guarantee you it is one variable that is having an effect on this disease. Every two out of three people have at least one chronic disease now in the U.S. Every one out of three people have two chronic diseases. These calcium channels, they're most prominent in our brain. Brain disease is an all-time high. One in six people have an anxiety disorder now. This has been drawn back to electricity since its first started. Arthur Furstenberg wrote, wrote a book called Invisible Rainbow. There's a, They called it neurasthenia back in the day and then eventually rebranded it into anxiety, but it was the same thing, and they knew it was caused by an abundance of radiation. ADHD, every one out of four children have some sort of ADHD now. Dementia and Alzheimer's, all-time highs increases over the last 10 to 20 years. Obesity and diabetes, 70% of Americans are overweight. Every two out of three, or every 45% are obese now. It's been shown to lower our metabolization of fats and sugars which of so it leads to some of this overweightness and then yeah I could go on and on about the disease but what can you do well first off stop using your phone as much <laughs> put it on airplane mode if you have it on your body because if you have it in your pocket or near, it's already been shown to cause infertility issues, and especially in men, but every one out of six couples have infertility. Get out into nature, leave your phone at home, turn off your Wi-Fi at night so you at least get an eight hour or so break. Wire, use wired headphones, wire your internet at home if you can. And then last but not least, biogeometry. It's, it's, it comes off as very woo-woo. It's this necklace that I have around my neck. But what it's been shown is to, by Ibrahim Karim, is in, in many books, I'll provide some of the links, has been shown to harmonize some of these energies. It works very similar to the way theaters harmonize sound and the way they shape the theater. 
it does it in a very similar way. It's maybe the only thing that can save us now. I'll provide a lot of more details in the show notes so you can look up all this and do your own investigations. But please start taking it seriously. Thank you.